You may be wondering why this looks so familiar. Is it the latest look from a catwalk? Nope. This skirt is straight from a supermarket aisle near you. This skirt is made from what are called fruit foam socks. Sexy, I know. <laughs> People at my local supermarket always look a little panicky when I walk in because they know I'm going to be digging through the trash trying to take it home. But my Cantonese isn't good enough to explain what I'm trying to do. I would like to use this waste to reimagine our relationship with materials. So these fruit foam socks are raising a number of questions for me. Where does the plastic go once the apples have been bought? Why does fruit need clothing? And what about our clothing? Today, the average consumer buys 60% more items per year than they did 15 years ago and keeps them half as long. Much like these fruit socks, our clothes are piling up in mountains of waste and deep landfill around the world. But I've spent the last three years imagining ways we could have a better relationship with materials. And it all started in 2017 when I got a loud wake-up call. I was at a sustainable fashion event in Hong Kong where I learned that 39% of residents had thrown away an item of clothing after wearing it just once. And on a global scale, the number of garments produced per year has doubled since 2000. So on the one hand, we're throwing more and more away, and on the other, the industry is just growing and growing. I felt angry. I was angry at myself for feeding this beast, and I was angry at the industry for being such a beast in the first place. On the spot, I decided that for one year, I would not buy a single item of new clothing, not one. Now, I know this isn't a big deal, but it felt like a first step, and I felt like I needed to do something. What I learned through that time was that these small actions make a big impact. Look, I wasn't a big spender. I was pretty vanilla when it came to shopping. But when I stopped, I could clearly recognize my patterns. And they went a little something like this. Feeling the need to belong, plus cheap clothing tags, equals buying things I don't need. The message I'd been given from media and society and advertising through the course of my life, and these are all different industries, not just fashion, but the message I was getting was that I am broken, and on a shelf somewhere out there was something that could fix me. So my one year of no new shopping raised a number of things for me, and it became crystal clear in the summer of 2017. Now picture this. It's a scorching hot day. I'm walking down a street in central Hong Kong. It is so hot, the pavement is melting. I need aircon. But the closest option is a massive fast fashion chain. I go in. The music is pumping, the aircon is strong, and the lights are bright. And, and once upon a time, I would have looked around and said, ooh, party dress, or hmm, office wear. <laughs> Not today. All I can see is endless piles and patterns, and I don't know what season we're meant to be in because we've gone from two fashion seasons per year to 52 micro seasons. But it doesn't really matter because all I can see is a lot of textiles that I know will mostly end up in landfill. And I'm not feeling that shopper's high. I'm feeling low anxiety. So my one year of no new shopping for new clothing is turning into four years. And it is no longer an experiment. Rather, it is a way of life. And it has changed me in ways I never imagined. There are three things I want you to know. The first is that when it comes to media and marketing, there is a lot of noise. From the moment we can read to tap a screen, we are sold to. Over the last century, the advertising industry has successfully tapped into our subconscious, targeting our need to belong. As therapist Marissa Peer says, we're driven by two fundamental forces, the need to belong and the fear of rejection. Now look, I know that there is great joy and value in expressing yourself through fashion, showing the world who you are. I'm with you. But I had to ask myself, 
beyond the instant gratification. Was I buying things in a bid to feel like I belong? Were there uncomfortable feelings, including embarrassment, vulnerability, sadness, shame, that I could address instead of putting under a new dress? If I could name the feeling and acknowledge it, could I proceed from a point of power? My experience has been yes. When I pulled the plug on all that media noise, a great wave of relief washed over me. I can't lose. I'm not playing the game. My second insight is around how not all materials are created equal. So why am I wearing this skirt made from plastic fruit packaging? Because I would like to illustrate my second point. I would like you to look at the label in your clothing right now. Chances are you are wearing plastic too. Around 60% of our clothing today is made from polyester, nylon, and acrylic, all forms of plastic. It is lightweight, cheap, water resistant, but we are also paying a very heavy price for it in other ways. For example, every time we wash these garments, they release microplastics. This is not a particular type of plastic, rather any plastic fragment that is shorter than five millimeters in length. And they enter our natural systems through a number of ways, including cosmetics, clothing, and industrial processes. It is estimated that around 35% of the microplastics in our oceans today come from synthetic clothing. And by making their way into our oceans, they are also making their way into our food chains. It may only be a matter of time before fibers from your socks make it into your sushi. Yeah. So picture this. See if you can recognize yourself in the following scenario. You've just completed a workout. You're feeling pumped. You are wearing your yoga pants. You walk into your local cafe, and you order your favorite green smoothie. Within the blink of an eye, you have refused the plastic straw on offer because we know plastic straws are bad. So now let's take a step back. How many plastic straws do you think it takes to make a pair of yoga pants? Yoga pants, trainers, hoodies, sweatpants, all part of the athleisure family. And the sector is set to grow 7% between now and 2024. The polyester industry is seeing unprecedented growth, which means more microplastics into our environment. Now, my purpose is not to encourage you to dress in twigs, rather to point out the connections we do not make when we think about our relationship with materials. And let's talk about plastics. There are thousands of different types. Some keep oxygen from reaching your food. Some insulate our homes. Some are in your favorite daily drink. Did you know that there are over 11 billion microplastics in a cup of tea? Some can save your life. Think bicycle helmets and hospital equipment. Plastic is generous. It is lightweight, flexible, cheap. The 2018 headlines around plastic straws raised awareness around single-use plastics but there is still so much we do not understand about where to take advantage of this material's generosity and where to stop the crazy overuse that sees us eating, drinking, and breathing it. My third insight is around outdated belief systems. I'll explain. So while I won't go back to buying new clothing, I do value expressing myself through fashion. And I have found that secondhand fashion, although not perfect, is a good way to love clothes for longer. It was during a conversation with one of my best friends that I realized that secondhand might need a bit of rebranding. So I was sharing my love for used clothing with her, and she, she leaned closer and she said, that's, that's all well, good and, well and good, Tanya, but isn't used clothing, you know, isn't it, um, isn't it dirty? That's what my mother always says. And I knew where she was coming from. But as I learned more about the fashion production, some truly dirty facts came up. Over a quarter of pesticides in the world are used to grow conventional cotton. 20% of industrial water pollution comes from the fashion industry. And microplastics have been found in beer, salt, and honey. So when it comes to beliefs around secondhand, we're often told that it's dirty, it's of lesser value, it means that you're poor, or in some cases, even carries superstition. That new is always better. And I've heard this from friends right around the world. 
In this age of hyperconsumption, where things are designed to fail and made faster and cheaper than ever before, how can we carry this belief system that new is always better? So these insights have led me to think about solutions, and there are three in particular that resonate with me. Now, the first one is around secondhand, and as you know, I am a fan, and I'm not alone. The secondhand fashion market is currently valued at 28 billion US dollars and set to grow to 64 billion over the next five years. When it comes to the innovation and textiles of the future, the situation is truly wild. And I've chosen these particular examples because I would like to change the way you look at kitchens and gardens forever. A cow, a cactus, a pineapple. Walk into a bar. No, I'm joking. A cow, a cactus, and a pineapple. There is an unexpected relationship between these elements. With over 300 million cows killed around the world per year, the leather industry is extremely polluting as well as ethically challenging. There are concerns around people working in the tanneries, health hazards, and chemical waste are but a few of the challenges we face. However, global demand for plant-based leather is on the rise. From mangoes to mushrooms, pineapple to cacti, apples to grapes, the alternatives are already on the market and can be found in your clothing, shoes, and bags. Materials taken from the earth, sustainably processed, and designed to be returned to the earth. A third way we might have a better relationship with materials is to slow down and embrace the repair culture. Research has shown that there's a relationship between the way society treats materials and people. Research has shown that the more people care about objects, the more likely they are to care about the people in their societies as well. Take the Japanese art of kintsugi, roughly translated as joining with gold. Broken pottery is repaired using a seam of lacquer and precious metal with the belief that nothing is ever truly broken. The cracks in the pottery are seen as value and beauty. Can we treat ourselves in the same way? And I'd like to leave you with this. As I was thinking about ways we can have a better relationship with materials, I kept coming back to us, to people. We are where these ideas begin. We decide what gets made, how it gets made, and what happens to it after we no longer want it. We are the fabric of this world. So here's my dream. It's 2025. We're all proudly embracing secondhand. We have bags made out of pineapples, and we're repairing broken pottery and all kinds of items. We see t-shirts, fruit socks, and we see creative opportunities. However, those pineapples are not going to turn themselves into bags, and those pots are not going to find gold without us. You have the power to develop a more meaningful, more purposeful, and more creative relationship with the materials in your life. And you can do that today. This skirt is living proof. Thank you.